I got a buddy that needs me to build him a anchor farm. He's got a bunch of lead he's going to melt down into uh, uh, lead weights. And he's going to melt them down and pour them into this farm. And so he's actually got an anchor that he traced out for us. If you look right here. Um, and so it's, it's triangular with a flat base. And so it's going to be four of these pieces. So I'm going to measure these out right now and get them traced out of this piece. And then we'll cut them out probably with the circular saw. So anyways, I'm going to get measurements. And how I'm going to do this, being that it's a trapezoid, is I'll measure this length and this length. And I know that it's square. So center mark on here, center mark on there. And then I'll mark that out on this. And there will be just a bunch of lines. And I'm hoping... I don't know if I can or not, but I'm hoping I'll be able to get all four out of this one side. So I'll be using about a third of this sheet. So, anywho, that is our form. Let's get to measuring. So I have six and five eighths on this side. Yep, six and five eighths. So I'm gonna start at this very corner. Measure over six and five eighths. Mark here. And then this side, since I want them to be side by side, it comes out to two and an eighth. So I'm gonna put two and an eighth on that mark that I just marked. Mark another one. And then six and five eighths from there. Mark, and then one more two and five eighths. Or sorry, two and an eighth. Double check that. Two and an eighth. I'm glad I said that out loud because I would have done it wrong. So, now I know that center of this six and five eighths is center of that two and five eighths. So I'm going to get my head back on this square and I'll mark center so half of six and five eighths is three and five sixteenths so three five sixteenths and then I also need to know this is seven and a quarter tall so, set this bad boy up at seven and a quarter. And pull this past the table so the table's not bumping my square. So I know that cross is center of my two and an eighth. So I'm gonna go one and a sixteenth either side of that. And I'm going to draw, pull this plate out a little further so my square doesn't hit the table. I'm going to start drawing a line all the way across. And I'm actually, I've got a, a longer bar. I'm going to go grab that longer bar to draw my line the whole way across here. Establishing my seven and a quarter mark, just to make sure this plate's square. And it is. So I know this is a short corner, that's a short corner, and that's a short center. So I'm gonna take that long bar and draw this shape out real quick. I'm going from here to the corner. And then from here to the first mark. So now that I have this mark established, I know that I want to go six and five eighths from there. 
So put my 5 eighths mark right on the line and mark that. And then I got to go two and an eighth from that one. And then six and 5 eighths again. Probably the more accurate way to have these all be identical would be to cut one out and trace it. But I think this will work just fine. Okay, there's our four pieces. And then the end cap, because this short end here is the bottom of the anchor. We'll have to cut out a two by two or two and an eighth by two and an eighth piece. But we'll get that out of this corner over here. So I'm gonna slide this past the table so I can cut in. I'm actually gonna cut this long line first, just cut this whole piece off. Then I can turn it sideways and just make one cut at a time. So I'm going to grab two clamps to clamp this down to the fixture table. That is not done. I still have, I have two more videos for sure coming out on that. I'm also going to get long sleeves on and a face shield because the circular saw is just kind of wicked cutting through this stuff. That's that quick. So now I can clamp it this way and cut those lines. The circular saw is great on thinner material like this. You get anything above 3 16 and it's, it's dang near useless. A grinder with a skinny wheel is better. Nice thing about the Nice thing about the circular saw though is it's just chips. The chips get everywhere and they're terrible on carpet and stuff if you get them in your shoes. But it's not dust getting in your nose and in your lungs and stuff like a grinding wheel is. the chips from that it collects probably 50 percent at best but it's better than zero percent that's all four pieces there is just a little ever so slight amount of variation there but uh i'll probably run these on the belt sander all together just to get them kind of squared up to each other Grab the hand broom, sweep all this off, and vacuum it off the floor real quick. Okay, the pieces are cleaned up just a little bit. I've got this piece clamped to a square, and the square sitting on a different piece. I'm going to tack this corner to spin around and tack that corner. And, you know, I can actually hang this off the table. And I can clap it to the table so it won't go anywhere. And now I can clamp both pieces. Or attack both sides. Okay, on this I'm running my uh, old Lincoln SP250. She's a oldie but a goodie. So it also does presets like the other machine. 10 gauge, 225 inches a minute, 17.8 volts. This is a pretty sweet welder. It was, in my opinion, too advanced for its time, so it didn't really catch on. But I love it. I've had it for almost 20 years. So I just did six smaller tacks. Um, being that this is going to be a, a form, if I was to burn through, then when you're trying to extract that uh, anchor, it'd be dang near impossible. And so I'll end up 
get the other two tacked together just like this and I'll mesh all four together and then I'll just bounce around and tack until all these are filled. I won't do any full stitches because I don't want any warping or any burn through. So I'm gonna do this to the next two pieces and then we'll weld all four together then we're cap we'll cap and we'll be done. We're a little misaligned there. So I'm just gonna massage stuff around and get it till it lines up good. Use a little tapping. I don't know if I can fit a square in there or not. I guess what I didn't factor in when I put the squares in there is that being that it's trapezoidal, it shouldn't actually be square. Um, so I'm trying to think about how to true this bad boy up. These are the times that I wish I had a press. Grab a little hammer to tap on those and I think that's actually working to pull it out. Never use a flathead screwdriver as a pry bar. I think I'm gonna weld this out with it clamped like that so that it hopefully takes that form and doesn't go back to out of square. Not that it's square, out of true, I guess is the better term. So two and a sixteenth by two and a sixteenth, we'll fill that in. So this kind of shows, <clears throat> like I said, I, I messed up when I squared those pieces together. I probably should have laid it up in a trapezoid with one tack on each side and formed it better. But for an anchor, this will be just fine. So I'm gonna get a couple small tacks on this. There's a little gap there. I'm gonna grab the smallest piece of TIG wire I have and just lay it there so that it will not burn through. Hopefully this doesn't turn into a disaster. That's my goal to have that just sit right like that. I'm gonna get this wet to cool it off and then grind everything up and we'll show you what we get. I'm gonna grab a flapper wheel and I'm just gonna hit the whole thing with a flapper wheel so there's no sharp edges. And that will be the form for an anchor. So you'll fill it full lead, drop an eye bolt in there, hang your eye bolt, and then once it cools off, pull the lead out. You might have to attach a slide hammer on this to pop it off the lead or bang it on something, but should order come out. I don't know what that looks like to you, but that is uh, a boat anchor form. So like I said before, what would happen is you'd melt a bunch of lead in uh, some sort of a forging or smelting pot. You'd pour it in here while it's still liquid, you drop an eye bolt in. That way you can attach your rope carabiner or whatever from your boat to that and throw this out in the water. Uh, the reason I was told they want to do lead is because lead's softer so it'll be grippier on rocks and stuff like that. This individual made an anchor before and I guess it was too obtuse of an angle and it didn't grab well. And he said that the anchors that they bought are more acute or narrow like this and that they grab better. So I would have thought the obtuse one would grab way better because it'd lay on its side and hook better, but I guess it's more prone to standing up like that if it's too obtuse. And so this one's more prone to dropping over. There's the form. Once again, like I said, I, I made mistakes. It's not, two sides are perfectly square and they shouldn't be, I guess is the truth of that. Or they should be when, the, when it's at an angle, not like this. And I had it clamped like that. And that shouldn't be square. That should be square. So, uh, lesson learned. Next time, lay them all together, maybe on a square plate on the bottom and weld it out, I guess. So, but, anywho, should be good to go.